I think we are live. Welcome, welcome. We are doing a topic today which is very important, which is I have been just going over what I think is the most important parts of running a resale business. So just let's make sure in the chat that you guys can hear me and I'll just get straight into it. Appreciate, appreciate you guys stopping by and we do our live every Tuesday where I do a live Q&A with everyone. We good? Yep. Okay, let's good. do it. So number one is um, clear business model. I think this is so important because it makes everything else so much easier. So as an example, if you're selling singles, like in my Poshmark closet, which is at Risa or Nirvana, every single item in the entire closet makes a $20 profit or more. Makes it so much easier because 99% of things do not go into that store because they are not $20 profit. So only specific things go in there. I'm pretty excited because over the next couple of months, I have some really great stuff that I'm gonna put in the Poshmark closet that doesn't sell as well on whatnot. So I'm pretty jazzed about that. Having a clear business model really solves a ton of problems because you can say no to things that don't work. And as an example, I'm gonna turn off wholesale and not do any bulk purchasing, I'm sorry, bulk selling. The reason is because all of the, like 90% of my problems as a seller have come from not being able to fulfill group orders because group orders are more difficult. When you're selling business to business, you need a very specific solution for people. And the, the solution people want is they want specific wholesale orders for specific things. That's very difficult for me to actually cater to because the stuff that I'm buying is not, is all mixed in together. So fulfilling a specific order, very difficult. So I'm gonna stay out of that lane and just sell lots of one to five items, which I can show every single item. It's more clear, it's my business model. And I probably get 30 emails a day, people asking me to supply them. I can't fulfill those orders. So I'm just gonna not do that and just tell people I'm not set up for that because it requires a totally different setup. I don't have the enough space to properly sort to send people exactly what they're looking for. And people are very specific, like, I only want free people, dresses, size large or bigger. That's not that easy, because it comes in mixed with everything else. I do get it, but it comes in with extra small, small, medium, it comes in with coats, jackets, sometimes shoes and accessories, all bundled together. Makes it extremely difficult to cherry pick for somebody. Okay, number two, um, financial management. So, this is kind of insane because when you're starting your own business, especially resale business, you don't have to use any of your own money. You can just start with something around the house, make a couple bucks, keep flipping that over and over again, and you'll get some momentum and you'll be able to go um, to continue to, to scale your business. What a lot of people do though, is when sales are kind of slowing down, they reach into their pocket, they pull out some cash, they buy a whole bunch of other things that don't sell and they kind of get into a cash crunch. If you only use house money, you never get in a cash crunch because it's not even money you had before to begin with. You took value out of something that you already own, so you invested no money, turned that into more money to buy more things. You're not actually, you're not actually using your own money. So the financial management part only becomes a problem if you start using your own money to buy a product. So I don't know, are there questions yet? Well, Casey's saying we can have a clear model, but selling online is really dynamic. What That's true. Think? Selling dynamic, it, it's true. So your, your model can be set, but it can be dynamic in the products that you sell. And that's one, one thing I really have a challenge with um, selling right now is because all my stuff coming in is so different that it's making me like, it's making me come to the conclusion that the items that do not match what I sell, I need to just sell for a dollar. Um, I don't want to pay the time to donate the item. So I'm just, the items that don't match, I'm just going to let go for super cheap. Let somebody else have it because it's their model. So I'm okay mixing those in. And the only downside is that I'll be known for good deals. That's like the only, the only downside is that on the items that I'm not set up for, people are going to make bank on those items because I'm not going to, it's just not set up that way. So I do agree with you as a dynamic. The problem is just so many, all of the things that come into your shop that are not what you normally sell kills 99% of resellers, including me. All of my customer service problems are from that. If I just sold one type of way, I would have no problems. That's why I'm pretty sure I'm gonna shut down this wholesale side of my company completely to zero because it just takes so much time and Pareto's principle, it's not a big portion of my income and it's where I spend all my time and it's where all the problems come from. So I need to get rid of it and just focus on what works for me which is going to be different for what works for you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Brett. They like your camera. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, um, there are questions, though. Let's do it. 
Omar says, can you give some tips to when I create a buying list for my vintage suppliers? I'm making a PDF with pics and descriptions of what I want to buy. Should I include the price I want to pay? I got that. So um, John, Vintage DS, if you guys know him, he made a tag chart of every single tag for vintage. It's unbelievable. He made me a binder of every single tag so I could learn vintage. And it was really cool because I didn't know that much about vintage, but once I went through there, I'm like, oh, this is 95, this is 99, this is single stitch, this is not, this one's more rare, this one's less rare, um, this one's modern. So all those tags really helped me. And of course, you could give that to somebody who is shopping for you and say, pick all these tags up for me. Um, so I, for your buy list, a PDF, a book, uh, a video, any of those things would be fantastic. I just took a forklift certification and it was online. So I did this online test to drive a forklift and then they, um, I did a driver test in person right after the, the thing and I know how to drive a forklift now. So it's the same for, you wanna give as many resources as you can, video or lists or PDFs and educate the person and then they can go do it. Mm -hmm. Should they include the price that they want to pay too? Yes, I think you should. I think it's no secret. Like, um, people are always afraid of that person going off on their own, but it doesn't really work that way, especially if, like, this is like a huge problem in the resale industry. You get a supply or you get a hookup with somebody, and then you kind of, like, go around them or you, um, like, some, so you want to buy items for $5, right? And they find them and they're like, I'm just going to sell myself for $40 and I'm going to give this guy the average stuff. If you do that, right? If you mess up your business to business relationship, it's difficult to repair. You're going to have that reputation of somebody that sells stuff on the side. That's not the best reputation and everything, all of 99% of my success has come from repeat business, repeat suppliers, repeat customers. Um, last month I had 5,500 customers and I had 38 unhappy customers. So that's a problem. Like even though that's less than 1% of the people that I um, sold to, when you're selling a large volume, 38 people is a lot of people that are unhappy. So I have to improve that and make it closer to zero. And back to your, your buying thing. It comes from, for me, all the problems come from not buying exactly what I need to be buying. It's the same for your buyer. When you're giving somebody a list, it needs to be very specific because if you say I'll take, I'll take all Madewell as an example and they also bring you all extra small blouses, you already agreed to that, but those items are only worth $5. So like you can't pay them five, they're only worth five, you're gonna lose money after t shipping, tax and listing. So you have to be as specific as possible and you have to put the price. So it has to be enough of a margin that they can earn money. Uh, I overpay for lots of supply to keep the vendor happy because I don't want them working with other people. Um, there's plenty of people in our group, this may sound crazy to everyone listening right now, they tell whoever their supplier is that they'll pay more. They're like, hey, so our price is $5 and they're like, well, I'll pay six or seven if you only sell to me, just to keep that relationship open. You wanna keep the people who are supplying you as rich as possible. Sounds ridiculous, but trying to shortchange the supplier, it doesn't make sense because they control your destiny. Mm -hmm. Um, cases. Oh my gosh, how can we see the vintage tags? I'm a vintage seller. <laughs> um, so when uh, I asked Tech if we should supply it to the group and he told me to set it on fire because he <laughs> wants people to learn on their own. Because yeah. like the, uh, the, it's, it's much better if you learn on your own, but essentially I'll tell you how you, you build it on your own. You search vintage Hanes tags, right? A Google search will pop up. You'll read through the Pinterest article. You'll read through the Etsy article. You'll read through the Google article. You'll print it. You just do that for every brand. That's how you do it. There's nothing magical about the list that I have. And that's why Tech told me to set it on fire because he doesn't <laughs> want other people learning like that. You have to go do it. And honestly, I didn't learn as much from the PDF as I did selling 60,000 shirts. I know a good amount about vintage now from just doing that. The only problem is that it's super narrow. I only know like Hanes and Anvil tags. And I only know screen star tags from, I wore shirts in the 90s that had those tags. So the, there's, my knowledge is actually quite narrow. Um, there's so much to learn in the vintage category and it takes some time. Mm -hmm. Kay is also asking, so when is a good time to start buying again as a full-time reseller? <laughs> when your old stuff sells and you have more profit. 
So the way we preach it in the in our group at patreon.com slash the resource podcast is you only use house money. So you don't use your own money. We don't want people doing that because this type of business where you resell stuff, you're supposed to buy low, sell high, and have enough money to buy two. Buy one, sell high, buy two. Sell two, buy four. Sell four, buy eight. If you are getting money out of your own pocket to finance it, then it's sort of more of a hobby. And that's what I'm learning right now is that a lot of people who are buying from me are hobby sellers. So the problem is they don't reorder because they're not selling at first. You like um, all the business to business people who are buying from me, they sell all of it. They always have, they're always, always open, always accepting deals. That's different than the specific orders that I get. Those I can't fulfill. I need to just say no. So I'm going to have, I need to make a new default. Thank you for your interest in buying bulk from me, but I can't, I'm not set up for that. Mm -hmm. um, Dax says, how bad is time away? It's not bad at all. I think that everyone in the group and including my own personal experience, it only takes one week for your store to wake back up. So okay. go on vacation or you didn't list for a while. Don't panic. Just start consistent for seven days in a row. Use my sold method. That's all over the internet which is you just sell quality items, you optimize your existing ones, you lower the price and liquidate stale inventory, you donate what sucks, do that over and over again for one week and your store turns back on. Daniel says, I was scared to go in, to go full in on whatnot, but, the, but I loved the interview you did with the 18 year old seller. <clears throat> is whatnot going to be your main business going forward for the next five years? I, I think it might migrate to TikTok because I, I, TikTok is where all the people are. I'm kind of disappointed in how few people use whatnot. Um, mm. I was counting a couple of days ago, I think I only counted 1,500 people on the website on, in the fashion category at one time. That's adding together all the people and all the streams. That's really not very many people. 1,500 people is nothing. Like, if you go on to TikTok, there's people who have 70,000 people in their stream. 100,000 people in their stream and the app is perfect. It doesn't glitch like whatnot where like sometimes it ends at a dollar and you lose like and in, like the app is glitchy. It's not solid yet, right? And it only has so few people on it in my category. So TikTok is insane. There's people doing 500,000 a month selling clothes. That's a lot. There's like zero people doing that on whatnot, zero people doing that on eBay and Amazon. Amazon, actually, there's people doing that amount, but that kind of volume is so high and it can only be done where all the people are. And all the people right now are on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. That's where all the eyes are. So I want to move slowly over there. There's not that many people shopping on whatnot. Like that's, it's kind of surprising. And they have lowered the commissions. I used to make a lot more money referring people to whatnot. Now I don't. So. I don't know what they're doing. It seems like you, they would be the hungriest to get people to come onto their app, but there's not a lot of people shopping there. So I think eventually if I can move to TikTok, that would be better. I'm still learning the algorithm and getting ready and the live auction systems is not, are not set up on TikTok yet, but they will be. And when they're perfect, TikTok shop's already killing it. But when TikTok adds the live auction portion of it, it's gonna be insane. Mm. Um. Zach says, hey, Chris, I emailed you asking if I was able to advertise UK wholesale in the group or is that against the rules? Thank you. So we don't advertise any suppliers in the group or any products, actually. We're trying to keep it um, clean of that. I don't even advertise my own YouTube videos in there. There are people in the group that don't know I have a YouTube channel uh, <laughs> because I don't. We, it's like uh, hard to hard to vet people that their supply is legit or not. Mm -hmm. So um, it's difficult, so difficult because no matter what level of supplier you are at, you can still get screwed. Um, I bought 12,000 pieces of plus size clothing that I can't sell any of it. So um, I bought another 12,000 pieces of plus size clothing that came mixed in with a whole bunch of other stuff with it. And it can, it's difficult because what happened was I bought 12,000 pieces of clothing, right? And what I got was like 30,000 items. The 12,000 pieces of clothing are mixed in with everything. That's why I had so many orders that were late a couple weeks ago because it took me forever to fulfill those orders because I had to open the boxes and take out everything that wasn't plus size clothing. And then I had to find a place to put those things, the random things, and then rebox them. But it was so difficult. Shoes, clothing, jackets, everything was all mixed together. So there's no level of this where it's 
there's no, none of that, right? At the higher levels, there's more sorting, which makes it more challenging. That's why we can't vet people, and that's why we don't have it in, um, we don't have it in the group. But I do want to share this. Speaking of this, there's a lady that is in Texas. If you guys are interested, it's not for me, but maybe it's for you. She has um, ninety thousand dollars worth of inventory. She is in. Um, I think she's. I'm not sure what city in Texas. Let's see. She has three ten by thirty units full of rare stuff that her and her husband have been buying for 27 years and they didn't list it so it's a 27 year old death pile so if you guys are interested in that and you're in texas you can email me and i'll forward you their information it's not for me that would be the wrong thing for me to buy at this point in my career but it is tempting right it is tempting to get on a plane go over there and see what 27 years of thrifting has right that's a great video for a um um different kind of reseller YouTuber to fly there and buy, make an offer. I asked her and she said she wanted $30,000 per unit. Uh, that's, that's very expensive if you don't be, considering I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. She was like, what would you do? And I'm like, I'd have to look through all of it. If you want that kind of money, $90,000 to look through all of it, unless like the first 10 things are Mickey Mantle rookies. <laughs> How could you even make an offer like that on 10, by 33 of those is a thousand square feet of random thrifted things. The thing that's interesting to me is that all the items from the beginning of the journey have now become vintage because they're so old. Like items that she thrifted 27 years ago, anything, that would be vintage now. So that, that is somewhat interesting. It would be a good reseller nightmare series. <laughs> Speaking of which, Tech just released the first one yesterday. So if you guys want to check out Reseller Nightmares, it's on his channel. He killed it. He went into somebody's storage and showed them um, a bunch of things they could do to improve. He didn't yell at them one time, though, which is disappointing. <laughs> it's not like Gordon Ramsay. He's like not like Gordon Ramsay. Yelling. <laughs> Judy C. says, your background reminds me of your eBay days in your old location, a blast from the past. I it know, does right? Like <laughs> it, is, does, it, it is the same system. So yeah, it's exactly it looks, the same it, Exactly the same system. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. and when I get my eBay store back one day, I'll use the exact same system again, but I want to do it in a pod in my yard. Um, my mm. eBay yard will be fun. I can do the, Hey guys, I'm stepping out of my house and going to my eBay shed, go next door, go in there. Um, and yeah, hop in there. Um, Ed says, I'm selling new items using your $20 model. Mm -hmm. How different is the strategy selling new compared to used on eBay? Um, the it's great. If you can sell new items for $20 profit, that's a lot less describing of the condition. Um, they're just harder to find. Um, and they usually require more capital. Um, for the stuff that I'm selling on Poshmark, I'm looking for $8 buy cost to make 20 so I'm kind of tripling my money, two and a half times my money. But for a new item, I'm almost willing to spend 100 to make 20. So it's kind of a funky scenario. Some situations I spend 100 to make 10. So I know that's too risky for a lot of people, but for me, on those items that are pretty much guaranteed to sell, I'm not worried about it. Like hard drives, um, those solid state hard drives, sometimes they go on super sale and you have a two terabyte Samsung card. Have you guys seen those? Like two terabyte solid state memory. That's not risky. There's like not a lot of people scamming on those. Um, you could buy a hundred and sell a hundred in a week, but you're only going to make 10% on your investment. So is that worth it? Or is that too scary? You guys let me know in the chat. Would you spend a hundred to make 10 for SD hard drives that are solid state? To me, that's like no brainer because they sell like a thousand a minute. So like, I mean... There's so many of those sold. Mm -hmm. um, oh, there's a lot of questions. I'm trying to get through 16 ideas here. <laughs> I know. There, there are a lot of questions. Do you want to go over? Uh, we'll do that? two more, and then we'll go back to questions. Okay. Number three. Um, so number one is clear business plan. Number two is managing your money. Number three is effective marketing. I'll be brief on this. It's just understanding how to make your listings rank higher on eBay, Poshmark, Amazon, Mercari. That's how you get more effective marketing. You've already chosen a platform to do the marketing for you. You just have to get good at it. Um, next one is customer focus. 
This is number four, which is customer satisfaction is the key to every business. That's why um, I want to keep it really simple because the systems that I have set up right now, I really don't have that much customer service, less than 1%, but I like to decrease that to 0.1%. So if I sell 5,000 items, I'd only like to have 50 people who even have a question, right? And that way I can just reduce it two emails a day. That's super easy. So I'm really focusing on customers, trying to make sure that my defects are low. Um, number five, I can't believe I have 16 of these. Um, <laughs> quality product or service. That's the S in my sold method. Start with quality items. These are items that sell for the profit you're looking for in the time frame you're looking for. So earlier this morning, um, Catherine in the group, she found a red Carhartt jacket with great patina on it. Super used, had some stains on it, exactly what the cool kids are looking for. Uh, but it's red. <laughs> so it's not your normal Carhartt um, brown color, right? Or black. It's a red one. So it's a little bit more unusual. So it might take a little bit longer to find that right customer. But in my opinion, a red one should sell for a good price or more because it's just, it's more, more cool. So um, that's a scenario where it might take longer than you think to sell and that might not meet your metric. For So some people might actually cheap sell that jacket just to make sure that it sells in the short, shorter amount of time even though less people are looking for a red Carhartt jacket. So you just gotta be careful. If you find a really good item, but it takes six months to sell, that has to be in your business model. And I was talking about this on the shoe call earlier. I actually think that for shoes, it's like a one year sell through rate. The shoes that I have in my Poshmark closet, I think it's gonna take me one year to sell through. So that's unfortunate, but in order for me to sell them faster, I have to give them away and I don't want to give them away. I want to sell them at a reasonable market price. So I got to wait. Questions? Uh, my personal internet's going down. No. Can you log into this real fast? Yes. <laughs> um, also, your, the router has the internet oh. um, code on it. Do you want to get it? Okay. Because it's super fast. Use the five instead of the two. Okay. Um, oh, I'll just keep going until Christine oh. comes back with more questions. So <laughs> next one <laughs> is... This is going to sound crazy, but um, a strong online presence. So in today's digital age, uh, <laughs> straight from chat GPT, um, strong online presence is huge. You guys saw what happened to me, right? I got suspended on eBay and then I switched over to whatnot. I do think I'll get my eBay account back because I didn't do anything wrong. But um, when I get, when I got suspended, my income actually didn't change. I have a strong online presence. In fact, I think it was like the biggest jump in our group's history after I got suspended. Think about how strong my online presence is. I got suspended on the platform I talk about and more people than ever trusted me to teach them how to do it. That's how cra that's the craziest thing ever because um, I understand how the platform works and when that when your online presence is really strong, there's just so many opportunities to come to you. I think that I got a dozen calls from different companies looking to do business together after I got suspended, right? Um, it's just interesting. Strong online presence really, really, really helps. Hopefully that internet works. Yes. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm back on my phone. Sweet. Um, okay. Poke Kid was wondering, yep. is the one week back from the time away the same if you were away for a month compared to just a week? It's the same if you were away for three months. So like Tech's wife, she didn't do anything for, she was like not consistent for 90 days or she took a vacation for 90 days or she was gone for months. Came back one week after listing, the impressions were back to normal. It was like thousands of percent improvement. It doesn't take very long. And I also need to mention the next one before we continue, which is one of the biggest things that's important with, with any business is legal compliance. So think about how dumb it would be if I was actually doing something illegal and talking about it online, how dumb that is. So stupid. So you have to be within legal compliance. Otherwise, if you're in jail, you can't resell. So you just got to make sure you're staying within the legal boundaries of everything um, and stay within the rules. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing. Like none of my funds were ever held. I didn't have any defects on my account, no chargebacks on eBay. So it was an unusual situation where I didn't have any money held. So they were investigating and determined it was too high risk, but they didn't hold any funds. They didn't reduce any traffic. I was still top rated seller. So what a weird situation. So I hope I eventually do get my account back. 
Uh, you would think my strong online presence would help with that, but it hasn't. I still don't have it back yet. Mm. Um, Steven's asking, what is your take on all the platforms going to AI? I think it's time to kill it because AI is not good enough yet. <laughs> do, do you need a cloth? No, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> I have a cloth. I don't know if you guys saw that piece of dust. It's gone now. <laughs> Uh, but there's a piece of dust on the screen, so. <laughs> but I think AI is terrible still. So before the robots take over, we have a good opportunity to kill it because the AI is not accurate. It's just too generic right now, and it's not going to do better than someone who knows what they're doing. Um, Kay is asking, what would make an item on eBay not get any views? I have lots of those, sad face. <laughs> um, it's just the lack of demand for the item. So as an example, the Carhartt jacket from this morning I was talking about, only 14 of those have sold. Not that many Carhartt red jackets sell. It's not that common, at least the one that, um, that Catherine had. So in that scenario, there's nothing wrong with her Carhartt jacket not getting a lot of views. It just doesn't have a lot of searches. Now take that, instead of a Carhartt jacket, you do an Eddie Bauer jacket it's going to have even less searches because less people are looking for it. Now, instead of that, um, um, that jacket, you take a 32 degree cool, cool brand. I think that's the brand they sell at Costco. That's like crickets. Like no one's looking for a red one of those. Like pretty much no one's looking for a red one of those. It might be zero. So if there's no views and there's no watchers, it's probably because your item is not popular. So there's nothing to worry about with that. You just want to do the sold method. You want to discount, and donate those types of items and you're a different reseller now than when you first started you should be picking up much better items now the only thing that would suck would be if you ask the same way you list the same thing in the same way and expect different results this morning i was talking about my daughter if she doesn't ask she asked me for something if i don't give it to her she'll ask my wife the same question and then if that doesn't work she'll start over with me but in a different language and same question but she's trying asking it a different way, trying to get a different result. And eventually she might be able to get what she wants and she figured it out. That's what you need to do with reselling. You can't ask the same way. When you put up a bad listing and with an item that's not popular, you're asking the same way. You're asking for them to say no. We're not going to give up our super expensive traffic to you. Thank you so much for the super chat, Jamie. Thanks, Jamie. It's their third super chat that they've given us. Thank you. Um, they say, I specialize in vintage magazines on eBay. I have a Whatnot Seller account. Yep. Do you think Whatnot Auction would be a good place to sell magazines? I think it'd be a good place to hang out. If you have a vintage, um, a good vintage grasp, what I would do is hang out and ask higher prices. Because it's like, um, you're not gonna be able to do that volume, but if you have great, cool stuff, people will hang out with you and talk shop, you'll be able to get some sales. So it's, have a buy it now thing? I would have a buy it now yeah. or I would start high dollar auctions. I just saw somebody selling vintage, um, collectibles of some kind and they had $25 starts mm -hmm. and they just said I know I'm not gonna sell a lot of items today because I'm asking 25 which is closer to my eBay price mm -hmm. but I want to hang out with you guys and answer any questions I think it's a great way to do that vintage magazines vintage um, collectibles all that stuff is so popular um, especially like um, it, it brings to mind those vintage car magazines that people pay a lot of money for because their car is in it but that that's more of an eBay thing, right? Because you got to, like, if you have a, a vintage 69 Mustang, you may want that auto trader that had it as the cover. So it's hard to, on uh, Whatnot, with 30 people in the chat, find that person. It's so hard. That's why Whatnot is like, I don't think it's easier than eBay or Poshmark because um, there's so few people. My last thought on that is that one of my suppliers literally told me today to just go all in on Poshmark because there's millions of shoppers every day instead of 1500 on whatnot. So something to consider. Mm -hmm. um, Daniel says, I have 20K on TikTok. I would nice. recommend making daily content there. I think it would just take like 100 videos of you to pop off. I think even posting clips of your YouTube podcast on there is good. I think so too. Yeah, we could just do clips like that. We could do <laughs> clips. Um, I know lots of people that have great TikToks and they don't even make short, they don't even make portrait content they just take their existing content and pump out mm -hmm. um, content and I say a lot of things there's got to be a couple things that relate to people <laughs> um, I'm gonna do three more of these and we'll go back to Q&A mm -hmm. next one is effective team hire and retain the right people I am like so happy with my staff um, 
a lot of them are coming up on on work anniversaries. They've been with me for a long time. Um, they get along. I'm quick to squash beef if there's any issues. I feel like I I, I try to overpay my staff, so just to make it um, so they want to continue working with me. I think now I have five people who've been with me over a year, which is a lot because I've only been on whatnot for like 18 months. So pretty much everybody who started with me is still with me. Um, and making sure that each person is profitable is great. So you can continue to live another day if they bring enough business to pay for themselves and some. Um, next would be adaptability. This is obviously huge because the whatnot app has changed 20 times since I started. So it's difficult to keep up with the changes, but got to be adaptable and you got to figure out what works. Every time they announce a new change, I got to be in the app figuring it out. There's no other way to do it. People ask why I am on stream. If you see me on stream, 99% of the time I'm testing something. That's <laughs> why I'm there. I would like to have, I, I cannot stream more than a team of four, right? Um, so I'm on there testing it, trying to figure it out on the ground. And I want you guys to do that with your reselling. Get in there and figure out what's wrong with your listings and why they're not selling. So I'm not getting the prices I want. I got to jump in there and see. And it is a shark tank. There's so many people with similar inventory to me and it's, it's hard. It's kind of a race to the bottom, but it's just part of it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, Jackie says, on eBay, do you <clears throat> recommend buyer pays different shipping based on location as opposed to flat rate shipping? Why or why not? I don't. I recommend a flat rate shipping, and this is the reason. Uh, I live in California, so if you live on the East Coast and you put calculated shipping of two or three pounds, it might be $22 to ship a pair of jeans to me, and I'm going to not buy from you because that's too much. But if you put a flat rate of $8.99, that is l more than what it costs you to ship the item on eBay, but less than what I would pay at the counter. So it's like a reasonable shipping charge. So if you charge $8.99 or $9.99 for priority shipping, flat then everyone gets a reasonable deal that's how i look at it so if you do calculate it then people who live far away from you get the short end of the stick and um, they may pass and that's why part of cassini's algorithm is they will present items that are closer to you so like the only way to compete against somebody that's closer to you with the same item is if you have a better listing so it's just something to consider. Like eBay really does pick and choose who sees the listings. Um, Kay says, so we should list all of our items for only $20, even though some items are worth way more? No, you should list all your items for market value. So whatever the market will yield is what you should list it for, or a little bit less. A $20 profit is what I recommend. So I don't recommend buying to resell anything Unless it's for $35 to $40 or more. Um, if you are under 30 items a day, I recommend only selling expensive stuff. The bread and butter stuff gets in the way of you learning the, the more expensive stuff. If I was out there hunting on my own, I would just do the same with my Poshmark closet. Every single item sells for over $35. My ASP is like $60 for most of my store. That helps a lot. You don't have to sell as many items. You can spend 99% of your time researching. And... That's a really good business idea. A um, reseller research team. Um, we're doing a version of that in our Patreon group that is just member created. So if you wanna make a deep dive on clove shoes, you put it in there, you make a little deep dive of it, and it unlocks the membership for you to go into there and you can communicate with other people who are doing the homework to upgrade their level. Um, we don't charge for it, it's just like, we just want people who are doing the work to network with other people doing the work. So what ends up happening is that basically all the people doing the work get better and better and better and make more and more and more money. Everybody else makes less and less and less money because their knowledge becomes less and less relevant. Like um, I'm in here trying to figure out how to make this work every single day because it changes. It's a moving target. It becomes harder every day. So you guys need to be doing the same thing. If you're not upgrading your knowledge, I think it's a problem. Like you guys know the inflation, right? Inflation's insane. Your grocery bills double what it used to be two years ago your ga gas is like six dollars everything is so expensive your knowledge needs to go up to offset it right if you're not doing anything you're you're um you're relatively becoming dumber because like everybody's getting smarter ai is dumb right now it's not going to be dumb in the future 
So everybody's got to make as much as they can right now and try not to let people pass you. I just did the interview with the 18-year-old who's like almost doing as much money as me by herself, which is kind of like blowing my mind that there are 18-year-old 18 18 year people with this kind of um, ability out there eating our lunch, right? There's not going to be anything left for us if everybody continues to crush at that rate. She's less than half my age. It's crazy. I have clothes older than her. So it's just, it's, it's wild. Um, Deborah says, hi, what is the quickest, most efficient way to list on eBay? With all of their classifications, it just takes too long to list. I sell women's new and used fashions. The main problem is this, the familiarity with the item specifics. Clothing is the most difficult category to master because there's about 20 item specifics which each, with each item. So the fastest way is to learn all 20 of them and then listings will take under one minute. Uh, if you don't know the item specifics, it's very hard to sell women's clothing because if you hand it to somebody else, um, they will not know either. So let me give you an example. Uh, I'm currently taking Cantonese lessons and the lady, uh, our lessons involve her watching my mouth as I talk and she's like, that's, you imitate Cantonese and Mandarin because you've never learned formally. So you speak it like you've heard it and no one has watched you talk and figured out what's wrong with the way your mouth is moving. That's why the sounds don't sound right. So for you to sound correctly, you need to, if you want to sound native or fluent, you need to have your mouth move the right way, not just memorize vocabulary. But a lot of resellers are just memorizing terms and they don't know what they mean. So when you're communicating on your listing, it doesn't sound right to the customer, doesn't sound right to the algorithm, and you're being left behind. I hope this analogy works because it's gonna to come to my last part. When you hire someone to help you and they're not fluent, right? Like, a, like AI or a virtual assistant or some Sally down the street, she's not fluent in whatever you're selling. So she's also not making a listing that makes sense to the person that is buying, right? So you have to become an expert. Once you become an expert, every single listing takes under one minute. It's crazy. You've already done the homework and learned the 20 things that are on it. The next time you list it, it's fast. So most people, they are just too wide. They sell everything and they can never get their listing fast because they have to look up every single term. That would take forever. Mm -hmm. There's 20 different things to learn. Do you really want to be a beginner forever and look up 20 things every single time you list something? What people end up doing is they just guess. They don't know. I don't know if this is a crew neck. I don't know if this is a maxi dress. I don't know. Uh, this looks like Stonehenge print to me and they don't even know what that is, right? So that's where people get in big trouble. I wish eBay would put like a little note. Why don't they use their AI to let people know like, your listing looks like it's about 70% wrong. Maybe you need to go in and fix it. Why don't their AI op tell you that? Looks like your sales are really slow. Probably your titles and photos and item specifics are wrong. They don't do that. They just take your money. They should be telling people like, the way that you listed your item, you only have a 3% chance of selling it. <laughs> then you would be like, oh wow, this AI is actually helping me. But what they're really doing is saying, if you find listing difficult, use our AI software and they'll write the description for you. And that's, that's, that's scary. That's scary. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna do three more and then we'll do more questions. One is risk management. Um, I'm really becoming better at this, learning what's risky and what's not. And I, like, if you guys watch my streams, I don't sell anything designer because it's just more risky. I'd like to sell less risky things. I'm thinking about potentially doing a Gucci show in the future. I'm going to do it at Gucci. I don't want any questions about authenticity or not, right? I'm going to be like, I'm at the store. I'm with the Gucci representative. We're selling two bags a day. They're going to ship it. You're going to watch a UPS guy come in and scan it. Let's call it a day. And even that, after saying it out loud, sounds stupid. Why would I want something so risky? So risk management is huge. Next is networking, building and maintaining relationships with suppliers. Um, it takes a long time to get suppliers to trust you. So just be careful. Out there when you're doing it, trust is built one strand by strand, and it also is very easy to break. Right? So just be careful. Take your time. Build relationships one at a time. Do one nice thing at a time. It takes a long time before people will trust you and give you supply. Um, next is innovation. This one I don't know how important it is for reselling because you don't really need to innovate much. You just need to find stuff that is already working and continue to do that. 
Do we still have questions? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. We only have four more. <laughs> so questions and then four more keys to success. Regarding innovation, though, like I feel like you've been experimenting on whatnot with trying to figure out new things that might work better. That's true. I guess what I'm trying to do on whatnot is save seconds. And so it does require a little innovation, a little thinking to think about how to remove things. But that's where the innovation is coming from. So how can I remove steps? So now I am literally thinking, does do, doing this remove a step? Um, if it doesn't, it's probably not the right direction. You can't add things to make it less complicated. As I improve the space out here, this is wild. It's be, there's more and more th space. As I continue to improve everything, it's going to be empty in here soon. And that's on purpose. I want to get it so it's really, really, really clean and streamlined. Mm -hmm. Muzami, Muzami Ali says, out of topic, what's your favorite platform besides eBay? Choose one. Um, my favorite platform to sell. I, ha I guess I have to go with whatnot. It's, my, it's where, my, um, where my interests lie currently. Um, I do think Poshmark is better though. If you're going to just pick one to do solo, I would pick Poshmark. If you can't sell on eBay, I wouldn't pick whatnot over Poshmark solo. It's too hard. You need a, um, a lot of things in place to do whatnot. Like a, um, yeah, because Poshmark, you can just start making money right away. With whatnot, it takes a little time to build a following. Sandra says, I'm trying to follow your $20 model too, yep. but I don't want to have over 500 items. How can I do that? Because listing every day keeps you in the algorithm. That's a good question. So Dana in our group, um, you guys should follow her. She is find well, I think. Guys, somebody put her uh, YouTube in the chat. She's in the group. She has about 400 to 500 items in her store. She makes $1,000 a week. Her listing goal is 10. So her goal is to go to the Goodwill bins every day, find 10 $20 profit items, not 10 $20 items. There's a big difference. A $20 item will, is pretty difficult to, to make it work. You got to sell a ridiculous number of items. Um, but if you want to make $20 profit an item, you can keep your store under 500 and kill it. She does her entire business out of a room that's smaller than this one. This room is 225 square feet. Her room is like 180 square feet and she makes a full-time living no garbage in her store all amazing stuff that people want mm -hmm. it's just small because it's hard to find those types of items so you can't do small store bad items that doesn't that's the only method of ebay that doesn't work mm -hmm. i'm going to give you guys two more and take another question um monitoring and measurement this is big for me um in the hundred thousand uh, dollar revenue call which we have on tuesdays they measure everything. How much, how much is your bank account going up? How many listings in your store do not meet your profit criteria? How many hours do you spend sourcing? They measure everything so that you can really make improvements. If you're not measuring anything, how are you going to know? Um, next is sustainability. And I'm glad that person asked me earlier about what do I want to do on whatnot for five years? Um, five years is a good number. I would love to be successful on whatnot for five more years. Um, but I think about things, can I just buy it one time and don't have to buy it again? Um, I don't like buying cheap garbage that I have to process. Um, also my wife recommended that I read some, uh, operations books. So currently I'm reading operations for dummies. Oh my God. I am so dumb. All the stuff that they are talking about is so <laughs> innovative to me, but, and it's written for dummies. So like literally... I'm reading it like, wow, I did not know that. So that's actually what got me onto the um, realizing that I'm not set up to do wholesale because they told me that business to business relationships are traditionally very specific. And I was like, man, that's hard. Really specific means I need my buyers to send me. I need these specific things, right? Because we talked about that earlier at the beginning of the call. Somebody was trying to hire a buyer, right? It's hard. I have to have like a really good idea of what they're looking for. That's not easy. You can't just develop that instantly because it's, it's difficult. A person that's buying it to put it on their back, that's easy. A person that wants to buy thousands of things from you, that's more intimate. That's like a very 
intimate. That's a very intimate relationship. They want to spend a lot of time and resources with you. That's like getting married almost because you got to like really date that person, understand their needs, wants, desires, and can you guys form a mutually beneficial lifelong relationship? So I'm trying to do this like uh, long-term things with long-term people. And we have two more to save after more Q&A. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat, Sylvia Hunt. Thank you, Sylvia. Um, she says, Hi, Chris. I still have a hard time to post fast for my problem and my lack of English. What do you suggest? Don't post fast. Um, post slow. Take your time. Really understand what you're listing. And everybody wants to go fast, but you have to go slow first and understand what you're doing and list the same kinds of things. So I recommend if English is a barrier to just stick to one type of thing. Um, I know I, I've been talking about the same thing for an hour, but if I moved to Brazil, it would be, I, I would not understand anything. I'd have to just start with something really narrow. Like, I'm just going to go to this one store until I can say hello and um, order chewing gum. Then I'll just move to the next thing. It's so hard. To go, I'm going to take in all Brazilian culture at the same time. It's just so much to learn. So if, if you're in an area, like for example, right now with Cantonese, all I'm learning right now is the alphabet. I'm just learning the phonetic sounds. I wrote down, I would like to be, um, I would like to be able to carry a conversation with most people and I'm giving myself four years to do that. Like it doesn't really work. Like I, I, I don't want to sound like an outsider. I want to sound like I'm Chinese. So I know it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm okay with being considered American born Chinese. But like, I, I want to come off professional when I'm talking. So it's going to take some time. It's, I'm giving myself four years of three lessons a week. Like, um, I don't see how you can learn faster than that. Like, I even asked my lady, like, can I speed this up? She's like, no, <laughs> you can't. How are you going to speed it up? And, I, and like, it's not, my daughter is in, uh, she goes to childcare for eight hours where they only speak one language. I'm not going to be able to keep up with her, and she's too. Her, she's basically fluent. It's, it's kind of mind blowing. She talks to my wife in Cantonese and me in English. She's double fluent. <laughs> <laughs> um, Darren says, "How often in the beginning would you use Terapeak for buying off-season <clears throat> items?" In the beginning, never, because I just think it's not that specific in the beginning. Um, you want to do Terra Peak when you're deep diving a specific thing you want to sell, not to get started. When you get started, you want to go to, into our group, check out the zip code call. If you're not in our group, you want to find things that are near you that sell for a good profit, right? Start there, then use Terra Peak. But you wouldn't start with Terra Peak right off the bat at the thrift store. You would need to find something that's worth investigating first then do the deep, then do every single kind of deep dive you can to learn the most about it. Um, so it makes a lot of sense for me to do operations since I'm kind of operating like a coffee shop right now. We're just making orders to customers. It's a bit different than reselling where you're trying to maximize every dollar. Jackie says, when I think of customer service, I think of buyers asking for more pictures and that requires me to go to my unit. Do you complete your, how do you complete your customer service in the morning in around five minutes? So on eBay, uh, most of the questions are, um, can you combine shipping? When do you ship? That's like half. Okay. So my template is, um, we ship same day and this is our cutoff time and, um, we combine shipping for a dollar 99 or more. I'm sorry, a dollar 99 for each additional item. So that's my blurb. So I have that already pre-saved. Um, I saved a text sh um, shortcut on my phone and my computer, and it's SSHIP. That doesn't really come up in normal typing. So it's just like any shipping related question, I type in SSHIP and it fills in my shipping information. That's one way that I can answer that same question over and over again millions of times. The other ones, I either tell them, sorry, I can't check for you, it's already packed in the packaging. Sorry, it's already packed away. I can't check for you. I apologize, but I have free returns. That's another default that I use because I don't check anything after I've listed it. Mm -hmm. Then also, um, I try to list it in the first place that most questions can be answered. So the main question I get with shoes is, can you measure the insole and the outsole? I just tell people, sorry, they're already packaged. Um, I can't measure for you. 
But if I had measured before I listed them, I would never get that question. So the other ones were in regards to cases and returns, those are pretty easy. Um, if I get a case or a return, I ask about the status of the order. So right now I'm still working through a couple orders. I need to figure out the status of the refund, the status of the return. Um, if there's a chargeback for some reason, I don't have very many of those, but in the chargeback situation, I have to wait for it to close out. So hopefully we can resolve it before a chargeback happens because in that scenario, I'm just going to wait for the credit card to make their decision. Um, but that, that's all it is. You can do the best you can. What not, eBay, Mercari, Poshmark, they all have seller protection. So as long as you follow their rules, they got your back. I have two more ideas and then we'll go in the Q&A. Second to last idea is resilience. I consider myself a pretty resilient person. Lots of stuff can happen to me during a day and it's pretty, it's pretty difficult to mess up my day because I am pretty focused on what I want. Um, and the, the main thing that messes up my resilience is just unnecessary drama that I cause upon myself. So if I could just avoid that, it would be great. Like if I can just make sure to eat healthy, drink water, use the bathroom, sleep well, do business properly, talk to customers, deliver what I said I'm supposed to do, all that normal stuff, I will not have any drama. And then the final one is strategic planning, which I recommend you guys do at least once a week. Um, sit down, get a cup of coffee, get some chai, grab a beer, think about where you want to take your business in five years, in 10 years, in three months, in six months, in nine months, who you want to be in business with and where you want to be, what kind of car you want to drive, what kind of neighborhood you want to live in. Um, I've been thinking about all that kind of stuff, who I want to be around, what kind of man I want to be, what kind of person I want to be to others. Strategic planning is, is really important. And thank you to ChatGPT today for giving me these prompts. So <laughs> I used AI to give me some ideas for what to talk about today, but I related it to you with my own personal experience. So you could use ChatGPT or uh, AI for your listing to give you a start, but you gotta finish it. You gotta know what's going on in your own life and with that product so you can relate it back home. But what do you guys think? Is that a proper use of AI? I was asking <laughs> AI what is important in a business and then I gave you the answers from my own business. Mm -hmm. um, should we keep going with Q&A? Yeah, let's do one. Yeah, three more questions. Okay. Okay. Mizami says, I bought the softbox photography lighting kit that you recommended. Yep. My question, is the photo a big difference in listing? Yes, the photos are huge. Um, I recommend, now I recommend four light boxes because that's the setup that I have in here. So there's one on each corner of the photo box. Photos are about... 25 to 40 percent of why somebody buys something if there's no photo they're probably not buying and if the photo is bad it's going to affect their decision mm -hmm. i don't think they need to be professionally lit but they do need to be well lit if that makes sense mm -hmm. you need lots of soft light does it need to be studio quality no definitely not mm -hmm. but it needs to be lots of light so people can see the item and all the features and quirks SC says, question, what is the best way to research and learn which brands sell best on eBay and Poshmark? It's a great question. So you start with figuring out what sells in your area. Then you branch off from that. So as an example, you'd say you want to look up what jackets sell. You find out in your area the Carhartt jackets sell for over $20 profit. So Carhartt, you start there. You figure out what is a chore jacket. How do corduroy jackets sell versus non-corduroy jackets? What is a lined jacket? Is it real leather? Is it fake leather? Is it a work in progress? What is the type of material? What is the wear on it? Is it new? Is it pre-owned? What is cool with the cool kids on a vintage jacket? Is it distressed? Is it work wear? Is it vintage? Is it modern? You just do a deep dive learning one topic at a time till you learn everything about it who is buying it, why they buy it, what's popular, what colors are best, what sizes are best, what measurements people care about. You probably don't need to measure the sleeve on a Carhartt, but if you do and you're asking a lot of money, you might be able to find somebody who's looking for the perfect fit, right? All that matters. So deep dives is just looking at every single keyword of the item and deep researching it and every single feature of the product. Mm -hmm. Wait, two more? Uh, sure. Okay. Let's see. Dave 
says, Chris, I collect ties on the side, mm. and I don't necessarily want to add them to my eBay store. Would Poshmark be good for selling designer and themed ties? Why not eBay? Um, I think that I don't like to mix business, business and pleasure. <laughs> so I just, whatever I like to collect, I just keep it. Like, for example, Pokemon cards. I am so happy just opening a few every year. <laughs> I don't have to collect them. I don't have to resell them. I don't have to grade them. They don't have to make money. I just want to open them and enjoy it for five minutes. Just that's it. I'm good with that. Um, if if you do want to sell it and go through that whole thing, you can just become an expert um, at it. And the best platform um, is definitely going to be eBay for that. Um, there's a good amount of men's shoppers on Poshmark, but rare cool ties. eBay is where it's at. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the super chat from Jackie Tran. Jackie, thank you. They say buy at eight and sell at 30 so we can buy two more from that sale. But if I buy a Nintendo Switch at 70, sell for 120, yep. I can't buy two more. Is no. this okay? It's okay. It's just not, you have to, you have to use a larger amount of money to, to do the goal and it's also a bit more risky. Um, so if you're comfortable selling Switches, or controllers or electronics or anything and you're comfortable with a smaller return it's fine it's perfectly fine in fact um i have lots of different versions of that um, my poshmark closet is all eight into 35 or more plus shipping right but sometimes on my uh, regular stream i'll pay um a hundred to make ten but i just have so many of them that it's okay it just depends on your level of risk tolerance and you, i'll give you an idea of that um if I'm buying dresses that are normally $500 for 100, right? Very scary. Okay. Cause when I started at $1, it needs a lot of time to get above a hundred, right? And some of those are going to sell for 75. So it's, a, it's just more risky to do a smaller margin, but you can't buy the, the only way to really buy two is at the smaller dollar amounts. That's why we specifically say 30 to $35 because that's like the lowest amount of risk with the highest amount of return. That makes sense. Smallest risk, most return is eight and a 30. Above that is higher amounts of risk, right? And potentially lower amounts of profit, but not always. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can spend 60 and sell for 200. That happens too, it's just a little more rare. Thank you for all the questions, everyone. There's a lot of questions. More? Okay, we can, we can call it, but I uh, appreciate, unless we should, one more? I think that was a good one to end. All right, that was a good one to end. But keep your keep your questions for next week. We'll do this again next week on Tuesday. Thank you guys, and let me know if this is an okay forum. We're just doing it in the Poshmark room, so it's a lot quieter in here than out there in the field. I call it the arena. So 